Hey everyone, welcome back to Rhythm Railroad. This is another update on my new space for my uh, HO layout. If you've been following along, uh, you know about my transition from N to HO and I'm moving down to my basement because um, I acquired the space um, a few months ago. So, um, the last time I uh, posted something, I had gone pretty far with progress with the floor and uh, framing and I believe I also showed you some of the insulation I was doing and um, even the uh, electrical panel expansion we ended up getting a, just another panel there I know that the, the uh, lid is not on it but um, uh, it will be up soon <clears throat> um, anyways so a few more things have happened um, starting with all the electrical uh, routing um, of the extra 220 lines that um, I had to put up for the future air conditioning down here and for <clears throat> the second dryer which we just got here um, the reason we got two dryers and two washers is because my wife um, has a lot of uh, laundry to do for our, our firmly which is three dogs and a horse and a lot of times she brings uh, horse blankets home to wash and we don't want to wash it uh, on our own machine so instead of using um, the old machines for our clothing we're going to use those for um, all the uh, animals <laughs> and then we'll use these new ones for our own clothing um, she always wanted that anyway and so um, if you again if, if you uh, were, were if you were keeping up with uh, the videos you know that I was building a laundry room on this side um, which is coming along really, really nice now. Uh, I finally got to frame it out correctly with a pocket door here. Uh, it's a nice large pocket door that's gonna open up into the into the uh, laundry room. And um, this angled wall, which I, I think I uh, explained why we were doing the angled wall, um, is actually very beneficial for the layout because it allows for a softer curves instead of having to do a 90 degree turn at this pole here. Now I can kind of swoop, you know, near the wall there without having to take any harsh turns. Um, so yeah, so the frame is done for this room. So any future bench work will be attached to this, uh, this wall and this wall. And also in the laundry room, not that it applies to the layout, but uh, my wife has had this dog sink to wash her dogs for about five, six years now, and we just never had the opportunity to, to hook it up because we would have had to change all the plumbing, which we just did today, which is nice. So that's another update. Um, we got all the venting and all the plumbing done today, along with getting rid of all the old uh, lead, you know, pipes and all the junk that was there before. <clears throat> so that's new, I uh, framed the back wall here we put up the boxes and uh, now we're just working on some wiring for the uh, dryer and some venting, stuff like that. But so this is my wife's area. She She's gonna be uh, taking full advantage of that laundry room. I'll be out here uh, playing with trains. <laughs> um, so another thing that I did was I finally got my baseboards, which I was I had ordered or were on back order. So uh, this one's laid down right now, but the idea is that that baseboard's gonna go there, and that's why I have the pecs kind of waiting to get hooked up on either end. And it goes through the walls, like I showed you in other videos. Um, there's a second one. I'm just trying to get through all this clutter here. There's a second one here. For this side of the room, there's a third one right here. And there's a fourth one over on this side. So that's all good to go. We just gotta hook it up now and test it out. Um, I was gonna put the sheet rug on first and then test it, but I'm afraid that if there's any leaks then I won't be able to see them. So I'd rather, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave the space be behind the, uh, the radiators, the uh, baseboards and test it, the system and see if it leaks. And if it doesn't, then I'll, I'll slide the sheet rug behind it. I know it's going to be a little annoying with notching and stuff, but I'd rather do it like that and be safe and know that I'm not going to have water back there. One other thing that I did was uh, 
reinforce this wall here and bring it out a little bit uh, for two reasons. One, because I want to make sure that I can box it out with this pole here. And originally when I put this wall up, it wasn't done very smart. So I kind of forgot about it. And then it was just, you know, it got locked in place by the time they put the tile up and all that stuff. So I just brought it out a little bit so that I can get around this pole with the sheetrock <coughs> and wrap it. So it looks neat. But the other reason is because I'm bringing the TV from my main floor down here. It's like a 55 inch TV so that I can watch TV and also so that I can put any kind of JMRI or any kind of control system up on a computer and uh, see it there as well. So because of that, uh, I reinforced it and I also brought all my CAT6 and all the uh, computer wires through here. So I can do an HDMI hookup, an Ethernet hookup here. And then I ran them over to the other side because my desk is probably going to be under the layout right there, my workbench. And so I have my other CAT6 on that side to, to connect to the TV. So that's new. Um, the other thing is I uh, put these plates up. I might have shown you part of this last time, but uh, I put these metal plates on the studs just to protect the, uh, the wiring and the pecs that's running across because there'll be a lot of screws going into those studs with bench work. So I wanted to be sure that I wasn't poking a hole either in the electrical or the plumbing. And so that goes all the way around, obviously. Um, you know, just making sure that I got every stud with a piece of plastic or wiring behind it protected. Uh, so that's new, I guess, unless I showed you last time. But um, uh, the reason why I have so much insulation here still ready to go is because we decided we we're going to insulate the ceiling as well. Uh, I figure there's going to be a lot of bell ringing and horn blowing. And I'm also a drummer, so I'm going to have a drum set in this little pocket here as well. So there's going to be a lot of noise <laughs> coming from the basement. And my uh, my wife works right up here. So I want to make sure that we insulate as much. You know, it's not going to be soundproof, but it's going to help. It's already much drier just with, with this insulation that's on the wall. So we got some more to put in the ceiling. And then we'll sheetrock over that. And yes, once I put the sheetrock up, it's going to get louder again. But at least it'll create some kind of barrier between this floor and the upstairs. Uh, so I can be as loud as I want down here. Um, so that's uh, basically what's happening as far as new stuff here in the new space. Uh, no, no changes to the track plan as of yet because I haven't started bench work. I'm sure once I start the bench work, I'll, uh, I'll start to modify things like in you know most people's situations when they start a layout. It's hard to visualize everything, and, and I do have it on, on any rail, the software called any rail. But it's, even then, it's, it's not easy to, to really see what it's going to be like until you put it into action. One thing I have decided on, well, I should say for now that I've decided on, is that I think I'm going to go with a spline sub roadbed. Uh, I saw it at uh, the local club that I go to here. Uh, and it's a it's I mean, they're known for their their track work. It's super sturdy and super uh, uh, You know smooth uh, So I kind of you know, I looked at how they did it and they explained a few things and um, it seems Manageable for me to do that way because I, I was gonna go with just a flat plywood shapes You know along with the risers under the open grid bench work but uh, even though, you know, that's still, I think it's a great way to do it. Uh, I'm a little bit worried with, with seams. And it seems like you waste a lot of wood just, uh, you know, trying to get the shapes out of the, you know, when you cut it out of the flat piece of plywood, there seems to be a lot of excess wood that you have to throw out. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think I, I prefer the spline. Maybe I'll change my mind when I actually start doing this. But, uh uh, as of right now, that's what I'm going with. The only thing I haven't decided on is what material to use for the spline. They use wood. They just do like a, a one by or a two by, and they, you know, they rip it into uh, thin pieces, and then they obviously stack it. 
to just go a, a little bit wider than the track with. But I've seen people do it on a, like, like, it's almost like a, like a hardboard. I, don't, I forget the actual name of it. But apparently it's easier to work with that stuff. And it's, it gives you a softer uh, sort of curve, like, uh, without having to, like, put so much force on the, on the clamps as, as you're bending, you know, a curve. Um, but apparently it's very dusty and it's, you know, it, it could break easily if you're not careful. Um, but it's supposed to be, once you get it all together and, and in layers, it's supposed to be very rigid and it's supposed to be easy to work with. So I'm going to experiment with both in small, like a small section and see which one I like better. But, um, since I have the people with the experience, um, you know, of the club using the spline with the wood, I might just go with that because I'll be able to get more help that way since they're not really familiar with the other method. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, one last thing I forgot to tell you about is I got my thermostat up and the wiring and that goes over to the electrical panel back there by the boiler. So all I got to do is wire that up over there and then I have my fourth zone there waiting to be hooked up so that I can control the this basement circuit here for heat. So that'll probably be tomorrow. Bad job. And uh, since, you know, as most of us are locked in our homes right now, pretty much, uh, there's nothing to do except make progress here. So I'm taking my mind off, you know, just being <laughs> stuck in the house. Uh, with doing this, uh, my wife and I went out and actually took her horse trailer to Lowe's and we stocked it up with plenty of sheetrock and insulation and two by fours and anything we could imagine that we would need, plumbing and whatever, and made sure that we had enough material in case we can't leave the house at all at some point. Uh, we can still, you know, spend our time here making progress. So that's where we're at. So uh, I guess uh, I'll be back in a few weeks or depending on how fast I make progress now, it might be a few days. Um, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.